Hello, my name is Drew Below Melchizedek, and uh, I'm about to tell you a story, a very long and beautiful story, about something that hardly anyone knows about it on, on Earth today. Uh, we've chosen this place of Sedona, Arizona, uh, in the United States, because this is where the story ends, is right here. But there's a long time before we get to the end to understand what is about to be talked about. So late last year, we did another presentation called The Maya of Eternal Time. This was on the Mayan prophecy that there was going to be a physical pole shift on the Earth, a huge Earth change transformation of the Earth. And uh, simultaneously with that, uh, the Mayans also are predicting that there's going to be an equally huge change in human consciousness, that, uh, that we are going to change very rapidly, almost instantaneously, either during or before uh, or soon afterwards after this pole shift takes place. Uh, so this story now that we are going to talk about, it's still timed to the same timing that the Mayans are talking about, the procession of the equinoxes, uh, the last 26,000 years. It's still in the same time frame, the same everything, except this story is going to focus on this human change this human, human consciousness change that we're all about to go through. However, instead of uh, it being from a Mayan perspective, which they are the timekeepers of the world, it will not come from there. It will come from ancient Egypt uh, because they are the ones, uh, going back further in time, they are the ones that uh, actually originated all of this work uh, that we're about to talk about. So it's from, this, from the ancient Egyptian point of view that we will look through their eyes to see this uh, to, uh, to see and to understand this story that we're about to give to you. This story as I started to say is, is something that very few people on earth know. Uh, there are secret groups uh, like the Masons and uh, the Ascended Masters and uh, the Sufis, certain groups of Sufis uh, the Buddhist, Tib Tibetan Buddhists, they're also familiar with what we're talking about. And there are a few groups in Hinduism that also understand. But most of the religious groups have no idea what we're about to talk about. And most of the world doesn't know. However, science is just beginning to understand. And so uh, this is something you may not know. And so, uh, so you have to hang in there with me because this is... Uh, an unusual subject to begin to speak about. This is not something that you are learning. Uh, you already know this information. It's in your heart. And you know it very, very well. It's just that you have forgotten what it is. And so uh, everything we are about to do is not to teach you, but to trigger your own memories so that you can remember what we're talking about. Because you have lived through this a long time ago. And you know what we're talking about. And so please keep in mind and, and, and allow yourself to be able to make changes within yourself as you watch this film. Otherwise, you're really going to miss the deeper secret aspect of what this is all about. The story began in a place called Atlantis. Yes, I know that science is not certain that Atlantis ever existed, even though people in history like Plato uh, said that it did. They've never found any evidence to prove that it actually sank below the ocean waves. But there are remnants of people that are alive today that do remember. Uh, the Hopi, for example, uh, they remember, and they have told me personally, that they used to live on Atlantis. And I've been in South America, in Colombia, to uh, the uh, Kogi, the Arawakos, the Wiwas, and the Conguamos. And they also remember that they used to live in, in Atlantis, and they have told me directly that they have lived there. I even met uh, a, a Mongolian shaman uh, recently who said that they remember that they used to be in Atlantis. And so uh, there are people alive that remember, and they remember a long ways back. The Mayans tell me uh, they were another tribe. The Mayans also have told me, the modern-day Mayans, they also have said that they used to live in Atlantis. We have documentation that they used to live in Atlantis from a long time ago, according to the Toronto document. 
but uh, which is just stones showing uh, the ancient city of Atlantis and how it started to sink and, and the volcanoes were going off and how uh, they uh, got into boats and rowed from, there, from where they were uh, into the Yucatan. And, uh, and this was from a long time ago, but they still remember today that they were from there. And so uh, we do have living people that remember this and, and it, is, it is these people that uh, we are drawing most of this information from, as well as the ancient Egyptians, who have actually been in this area here. Uh, I know it's not in our history, but this is another story for another time. But they have been here. In fact, they have been back over here in Boynton Canyon and into the Grand Canyon. And so, beginning with Atlantis, uh, this was a time in our history where we had developed... Uh, consciously to a very high level, a level of awareness beyond anything that we assume that is even possible for humankind. But we were there. Uh, we had broken the bonds with uh, gravity. We were able to levitate and to move in ways, uh, like I said, it, it just, it's hard to believe. But we had reached this high level of, of consciousness. However, that was only a small group of them. It was probably less than a thousand people that had actually reached that. Most of the uh, people there were in a level of consciousness similar to what we are in now. And in between those people, the ordinary people of Atlantis and these very high level beings were the Maya. And it was the same name. Uh, and they remember that's what they did. They were the translators between this very high level of consciousness and the ordinary people. They were the priesthood the ones that uh, translated through ceremony what, the, what was being told by the, this inner group of very high beings to the ordinary people out in Atlantis. Everything was going fine for a very, very long time until about 4,000 years before uh, this happened, a comet came out of the, a meteorite came out of the uh, atmosphere and just missed the western shores of Atlantis. It it broke into three pieces. This is science knows all of this. It broke into three pieces and went into the ocean and made these three huge holes right on the edge of, of Atlantis. And, uh, and the meteorite, the pieces from that are spread all over the western, the eastern shores of the United States and, the, and down into the ocean around there. Well, this created the, this unstabilized their continent. It left them really on the edge of a huge abyss. And so, 4,000 years later, or 13,000 years ago from now, uh, that's when we had another pole shift. And when we had that pole shift, uh, the continent couldn't withstand the pole shift, and it sank into the ocean. This is the, the best we could tell right now. This is what happened. But these people, uh, these very high-level beings, uh, they, they knew this was going to happen. They knew at least 200 years before they knew their continent was going to sink, and they prepared for this. And, uh, and in that preparation, one of these groups, a very small group of them, uh, which were perhaps misguided what, for whatever the reason, they built a pyramid made out of stone, a very large one. And uh, that pyramid sits off the coast of Bimini right now, uh, down deep into the ocean. And... Uh, and they built this pyramid, and inside of there, they, they included, a, for us, a new technology. It's called the Merkaba. It's around human beings, but you can actually put it into a, a stone or to uh, electronics, any way that you want. And they created this, like, this, this technology inside of this pyramid. Their purpose was not uh, very good. Uh, they actually wanted to control the continent of, of Atlantis, and eventually to control the entire world. And, uh, but it had been a very long time since they had actually done this, and so they didn't really know exactly how to do it, and they lost control of this pyramid. Uh, it was horrible what took place. Uh, it, it split open the dimensional levels between the third and the fourth dimension. It exposed human beings to uh, a level of consciousness and awareness that we're not prepared for. And it, it allowed beings from other levels of existence to come in here that went into other people at that time. And it was painful. 
and it ended up being uh, a disaster on, a, on, a, on the biggest level you can imagine. And so for the last, uh, at least the last couple hundred years of Atlantis, uh, they were in pain. It was, it was terrible. Everybody was sick, and they were dying. These, this group of very high-level beings, they decided that they had to do something, and they went into uh, a, a connection with our own, con our own galaxy and got permission to do something that is very rare. Uh, since we had already reached this high level of consciousness, we had obtained it naturally, they decided or got permission to be able to do something to help us to get back to that level of consciousness. Now, normally that's illegal. You can't, uh, throughout the universe, you can't interfere with the other forms of consciousness. You have to leave them alone and let them naturally do whatever they're going to do. But because we had reached this level, we got permission to do something very unusual. And it's going to take me a while to explain it to you because this is outside of our normal way of thinking. So there were three men that uh, became paramount in this whole story. Uh, they were the ones out of this small group of highly intelligent beings who knew that we were going to fall, uh, knew that we were going to uh, drop in consciousness, and, and they were the ones that engineered, conceived of, uh, a, a plan or an idea of how to bring this back to us. Uh, their names, one of them was Chikutet Arlich Vomalites, the other one was Ra, the other one was Ararat. And these three men were ascended masters. Uh, they no longer died any longer. They had figured that one out a long time ago. Uh, and they were also a part of the ascended masters uh, of that same group that, w that people refer to today, but they're older ones. They were ones that have been around for a very long time. And what they decided to do was something that is tried throughout the universe occasionally. Uh, it doesn't always work. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. And when it doesn't work, uh, it's just the, the, the race of beings on that planet have to just start all over again. And that is usually hundreds of thousands of years of evolution have to be done all over again. And so they began this process of, of returning our consciousness to us by building a building. And they built this building in an area relative to Atlantis at that time that was completely uninhabited out in the middle of nowhere by most people's standards. Uh, they chose this place for a very specific reason, which I'll talk about in a little while later. But it is the place that we now call Egypt. And this building that I'm referring to is the Great Pyramid in Egypt. This was, uh, they built this uh, before the sinking of Atlantis. They had to get it in place first because this building was more than just a building. It was also the marking uh, for the entire system that we're about to talk about. But uh, according to them, it was built through consciousness and it was built very, very rapidly in a matter, really, of hours. And, uh, and it was built, uh, even more crazy, it was built from the top down. From the top stones down to the bottom. When I presented this information to the Egyptian government back in the 90s, uh, they thought I was crazy too. And so, but they went and checked it to see, and they checked the mortar in between the stones uh, from the top to the bottom and found out that the oldest stones were on the top and the youngest ones were on the bottom. They couldn't explain it. They didn't know what to say about it, but they couldn't contradict what I was saying. Now, to understand this a little bit further, uh, it wasn't just from this one building that they were going to bring back our consciousness uh, or, this, or from the Great Pyramid. That was just the beginning. It was actually a, a, a web of pyramids and temples and, and, uh, and uh, sacred sites, uh, churches, all kinds of buildings, even mosques, everything, along with specific mountains and lakes and rivers that were uh, attuned to this. It was a web of these buildings all over the world. 83,000 of them all over the whole world were to be built uh, over time. And, and in doing that, uh, they were going to change the way the earth functions.